Hi everyone, and welcome back to part three. It's actually a, a three-part tutorial series on how to optimize your foliage for Unreal Engine 4 and also discussing the issues of foliage and overdraw in Unreal Engine 4. Okay, this is part three, and I apologize for the little bit of trouble that we ran into in the, at the end of the last tutorial, which was to do with an unexpected problem that I'd forgotten about. Um, but in this tutorial, I've fixed it, and now we're going to like finish the, 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 the process of optimizing the foliage or showing how to optimize the foliage in Blender. Uh, before we do that, I just thought it would be a cool idea to actually show the actual practical uh, the actual practical implications of overdraw on a game on a game level and like how it affects performance okay so we're looking at this level right now and it's really beautiful it's a really lovely level this is a content pack from the Unreal Engine 4 marketplace it looks really really beautiful okay but I'm getting a horrendous 45 FPS right and I've got a pretty good gaming computer with a GTX 1070 Right, like a good, decent graphics card, and I'm getting 45 FPS, right? And why is that? Okay, well, this is why. Okay, that's why. All right, it's just horrendous. Like, this shader, there's so much overdraw everywhere, you know, and that's why we're getting 45 FPS. Okay, and I can run around this map. It looks lovely. It's a lovely map. It's just it's this beautiful, beautiful environment. You know, kudos to the artists who created this, right? But everywhere, there's just this problem of these, of this overdraw with the shaders, right? So it's really bad. So if you want to make a map like this, and you actually want your players to be able to play it at, at, at above, you know, 60 FPS, you're going to have to optimize your foliage. Okay. So that's what we're here to talk about, and I'm going to try and continue. The explanation of how to optimize your foliage uh, for Unreal Engine 4 using Blender. Okay, cool. So let's go back to Blender. So in the last tutorial, we ran into the problem that uh, the 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 leaves and the trunk were not the same. Sorry, the leaves and the trunk. Right. Well, the leaves did not have their own material element. Right. Like the leaves, the trunk, and the leaves were all in the same material. Um, this is a previous Blender file that I that I'd worked on on this tree before, and in this Blend file, I've separated the leaves from the tree. Right. So we don't need to optimize the tree. The tree is fine. Okay. There's nothing wrong with a tree. What we re what we really need to do here is optimize the leaves. Okay. And what you're going to see here is that. I've actually got another alpha map. I've got another like black and white texture, a mask, mask texture that I've actually that I've actually created manually in Photoshop. And all I did, right, was I basically took the opacity mask that we created in the last tutorial. All right. It's not opening it. There it is. Right. So I took this texture and I really Painted a lot of white around it, like a lot of like um, like edge padding around it, to simplify the shape. Okay, and you know the reason for that may or may not be apparent for you to you, but I'm sure you can work out why I did that, right? But anyway, let's just go over the process. Okay, so we've got in Blender, we've got this new alpha mask texture, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut away all of the black geometry. Okay, so in Blender, there's the geometry for the for the leaves, right? And we've assigned it to our texture. Now I'm actually going to go through it right from the beginning. Okay, I'm going to remove this material, and there's our let's just our geometry. Now add a new material. Right. I'm going to go to the Textures tab, add a new texture, open up the texture. I believe it's this one. It is this one. So I've added the mask. Okay. I'm going to go to the Materials tab, 
check shadeless. Okay, that's important. Otherwise, this process won't work. We click on the mesh. Now it's already got a vertex color group. Okay, because the way we're going to way that we're going to do this right is we're going to assign vertex colors to the we're going to assign a black vertex color to the transparent geometry and a white vertex color to the opaque geometry and then we're going to delete the black geometry okay because I, this is one I've worked on already but I'm just going to delete I'm just going to delete that vertex color and add a new one okay now in order for vertex colors to work it's it requires the geometry to be dense enough for the renderer inside Blender to to paint the vertex colors to the mesh, right? Like if I if I painted this texture now, if I baked this texture now as vertex colors to this mesh, right? You wouldn't actually get any information. Like you might get like a really like blurry gradient between black and white between these vertices, right? In order to get like precision in terms of the baking of vertex colors, you need to you need to tessellate or subdivide the geometry. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay. So I've got the mesh. I've got the leaf mesh selected. I'm going to go to the uh, object modifiers tab. The modifiers tab. I'm going to click subdivision surface. Um, we don't want Catmull Clock because that smooths out the geometry. We just want simple. Okay. And you really want to ramp ramp up the subdivision as much as you can. Okay, I'm just going to go with uh, like four iterations. We've now got this is now like a eight hundred thousand tries. Okay, but that's good. That's it's about what we need for what we're doing here. I'm going to apply it. I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifier. So that's tessellated this entire tree. So now we've got lots of polygons, and that allows us to paint or to bake that. That image onto the tree, okay, which is what we're going to do now. So there's the geometry from the tree. I'm going to assign it to the mask. Okay, we've already got a vertex color. We've already assigned the material, and it's shapeless. So, so let's go to the the render tab, bake. Okay, this is the this is the, the ultimate step, right? Is this thing called bake to vertex color, right? And what's going to happen is it's going to take this black and white mask, and it's going to take the color information, which is black and white, and it's going to bake it onto the geometry as vertex colors. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Click bake. Take a second. Hopefully, it's worked. We've still got the the, the mesh selected. Click vertex paint. Right, and now you can see, right, that that information, that information that was in the texture previously, has now been baked to the mesh. Okay, so we go into object mode, sorry, edit mode, go into edit mode, Blender is stalling, but that will take it. That will take a second. Don't worry. I'm just gonna check my Discord in the process. Alright, my friends message me. Very nice of them. I hope that it's still actually recording while this process is happening. I apologize this is not the best tutorial. Uh, it's really just an effort on my part to communicate this workflow to my fellow game developers and artists. I'm not the best tutorial guy, I apologize. But, okay, it looks like it's okay. Blender has recovered. So now, 
what we want to do is we want to select all of the black geometry, right? And we do this by selecting the geometry that has the vertex color black, and you do this by pressing W, select by color. Okay, and that's going to take a second. All right, so it's selected all of the black geometry. There's, it's, missed out, it's missed out a couple of bits, and we're just going to select those manually inside the UV image editor. So we, oh, no, there's no geometry there. No, okay, we're good. So it looks like it's just selected the black geometry. Let me just delete it. Okay. So we've got rid of all of the, we've got rid of a well not all of but we've got rid of a lot of the transparent geometry. Blender is frozen again because it doesn't like it doesn't like these uh, eight hundred thousand polygons. Okay. And the problem is now is that although we've cut away all of, well not all, but we've cut away a lot of the transparent geometry, we've now got a mesh that is 800,000 polys. Now obviously you cannot put a mesh that is 800,000 polys inside Unreal Engine. So what we need to do now is we need to decimate the mesh. Okay. I'm going to go into object mode by pressing tab. We've still got a mesh selected. We go to modify uh, object the modifiers tab, decimate, uh, click to the same as collapse, make the ratio 0 0.1. That's going to take a second to calculate. All right, so that's massively reduced. That's reduced it to 52,000 faces. Uh, that's not triangles, that's faces. So, but that's good. It's massively reduced, massively reduced the poly count. We'll apply that one. All right, that's been applied. We're just going to do the same thing again. This mate. Uh, this time I'm going to choose 0.2. All right, because I just found that was the best, that was the best ratio. All right, apply it. So it has collapsed the geometry a lot, and it's cold, but it's cold all of the. We've got all of the, well, not all of it, but we've got a lot of the transparent geometry is cold. Um. You know, you will end up with like these sort of floating vertices. You know, you kind of need, still need a 3D artist to kind of look at these meshes and fix the stuff. I mean, there's ways you can get rid of that stuff using Blender. Okay. Okay. But now we've got a mesh that is 11,000 tries. I'm just going to grab it, move it back to the tree. All right. So that is the workflow. All right now we've. Uh, I'm going to join it. I've select the. Got the selected the leaves. Selected the trunk. Control J. Join it together. Okay. That's the tree. I'm going to export it. As an FBX file. Let me just check the material elements. So we've got the leaves and the tree are one thing. Okay, so we've got three material elements. We don't want that. Okay, we actually only want two. Just get rid of that one. Or maybe not. Let's just check which ones are which. Okay, that's the tree. That's nothing. That's the leaves. So we want to get rid of this one. Okay, because it's important to not have redundant material elements on your mesh because they cost a draw call. All right, so we've got rid of that redundant material element that we didn't need. Okay, so now we've just got two materials, which is what we want. One for the bark, one for the leaves. All right now we can export it back to our engine. We'll go back to our folder, this one. We'll call this one maple tree underscore optimize. Check selected objects, uncheck. I don't need to uncheck these, but I want anyway. Okay, okay. Go back into Unreal Engine. Um, let me close this project. 
and go back to my tutorial project. Sorry, there's a mistake here, but don't worry about that. Okay. So, remember earlier on we had these two trees, okay? Now, if we go and look at the original tree. this one, that was the original tree, I'm just going to scale it up because it's a bit small. So that was the original tree, okay? That was the original tree before we optimized it and we can look at the shader complexity again. Okay, that's what it looks like. Now let's go and get the tree that we've just optimized. Uh, I'm just going to make a new folder because I'll just show you I'm not using the one that I used before. Uh, maple opt, let's call it that, that's fine. And we just import I apologize, I don't remember where I put it. Let's explore it again. Optimize. Okay, so I put it in there, that's fine. This one. Now uh, what happens is is because you've because one has cut away the transparent geometry, it does actually increase the poly count of the foliage, okay? So I think the original maple tree was like like 15,000. I think the optimized one is like 20,000. So it's added 5,000 polys to the model, okay? Which is not great, okay? It's not good to add more polys, but, right, having 20,000 polys with an optimized, with optimized geometry and 15,000 with a load of geometry with really bad overdraw, right? The really bad overdraw is actually worse, okay? Because um, there's no real way to fix the overdraw. However, Unreal Engine has an automatic LOD system, right? Which is just amazing. The Unreal Engine 4 automatic LOD system is just awesome. So, actually, polygons don't matter that much as long as you don't go crazy, right? So, if you've got 20,000 for a tree, but you use LODs, right? In this case, I'm just going to use large prop, right? You you actually save a lot of performance. Don't worry about those uh, those errors. They don't matter that much, or maybe they do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think they do. It's cool, right? So now we've got that's the optimized tree. Now I'm just going to take the same material. Like you don't need to change anything about the material. You just need to optimize the geometry, right? Take this one, take the bark material. Well, you don't need to change anything about the materials. It's just the geometry that gets optimized. Okay. So here we are, right? We've got these two trees that look identical. Like you can't really you can't see any difference between them. I mean I can't. They look exactly the same. But once again, we can see now the difference in the shader complexity. Right. It's not perfect, right? Like if you really worked hard and you really like work to optimize this geometry, you'd get it better than this, you'd get it cleaner than this. Okay. Like I'll just show you a really quick screenshot of a tree that I made. Right. So I actually made this custom tree and it's completely green because you can actually completely optimize it, but you really require a 3D artist to do that. But if you if you don't have a 3D artist on hand to make you like completely new custom trees. Right, like that one, 
It's not the best tree in the world, but it's all right. Uh, if you don't have a 3D artist on hand to like make you custom trees, or you need to optimize the trees that you've got, this is a really good workflow. So let's go back to Unreal Engine, and you can see once again that the tree on the left was the original tree with lots of like you know lots of overdraw, and that was the tree on the right that I've optimized. Okay. Um, I hope that the explanation I've given you in Blender is clear. Uh, one note I will one note I will make is that in order to follow that workflow in Blender, you need a add-on for Blender uh, called Select by Color, which enables you to select geometry based on its vertex color. Right. So you can click on one polygon and say, okay, this polygon is black. I want to select on that one, select that polygon, and then select all other polygons that share the same vertex color. Uh, so that's a plugin. I will link that plugin in the video description. Okay, cool. So I, I really think that optimizing your foliage and your trees is really, really important. And I think it's really important for making like a, a playable and optimized game. Uh, I hope this tutorial series has been helpful. I apologize for the mistakes I've made on, on, on the way, but I hope you found it funny, as I did. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I hope overall this has been helpful. And uh, good luck with your games, good luck with your trees and foliage, and uh, make it awesome. Cheers.